spaces like this are really important for the community as well as a place to sort of reflect and actually just be immersed in nature and have, have that sort of time to be outside. Yeah. You're so right. I, I know it's interesting because this is this cemetery. I've never been here before. And and it's it's really interesting because we can hear we were talking earlier about the bird song um, and there's a busy road just just behind us all around us, I think. But I feel um, I feel as if um, I'm more peaceful already and and I, I usually I usually talk a lot faster and a lot louder than this, but I naturally am sort of more a little bit, my energy changes here and I imagine it would be a, a really good place to come if you were, I don't know, I'd come here if I was feeling down, I'd come and just walk or, or sit. So this wow. is a bit amazing. Yeah, that's wow. gorgeous. That's like a wood pile to end all wood piles. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, how lovely that they've left it here. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. I bet there's all kinds of insects living in here. Yeah. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah. I'm just having a look at um, this bit here. This, this is sort of um, really rotten. I mean, I, I, I dare say there will be creatures uh, who come and use sort of get inside the bark and there's vegetation growing on it already but but this is the the more rotten it is the more suitable it is for for burrowing insects um so so solitary wasps there are one or two solitary bees that do burrow into dead wood um in this country but but so much more i know i, I guess i don't know how long this has been here it doesn't look as if it's been here a very long time but i guess in time it'll get It'll be covered in fungi when it gets all damp and really, really rotted. And then, of course, all the nutrients will sort of go back into the earth. So it's fantastic. I wonder if it was one of the old, I, I don't know anything about um, conifers, pines, yeah, but I guess... blown down in the storm. So it was actually blown down. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. Blimey. Incredible. Yeah, I've, I've got a few. <laughs> I've got a few old logs in our garden in a corner sitting by a fence they're left over from from what we didn't burn in the wood bin to wood, wood burner sorry over winter but this is something else oh look so look there's a hole here that looks as if something oh quite a few oh, wow so these i'm guessing these would be wood boring beetles but then but there are bees small enough so one of our smallest bees could actually is, is small enough to to make its nest one of our smallest oh, wow. solitary bees to make its nest in that tiny little hole wow that's incredible it's bonkers isn't it yeah <laughs> nice to sit on as well <laughs> we could have our lunch on here <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. there as well yeah. it's fascinating all of all of the beauty within something that you know, some people would look at and just say, oh, it's an old bit of wood, but there's so much beauty here and, and life as well. It's, it's like a piece of art. Do you remember, did you ever, when you were a child, used to do put pieces of paper on bark and do oh, yes. bark with wax crayons? Yes, yeah. I used to love doing that. It's fantastic. That and, um, and in, in old churches, we used to, my mum always used to come armed with little wax sticks and pieces of paper, and we used to do all of the the nights um, on the floors and the plaques and things. Yeah. But Bach's so much more beautiful. Wow. I feel like children have a very innate connection with nature just naturally. And I feel like sometimes as we grow up, we can lose that a little bit. But um, yeah, I think it's, it's really important to, to reconnect and have, have that curiosity for nature and everything have, around us. Have you always felt that? Were you, did you, as a child, did you have sort of a thing for nature I think I was I was very curious sort of I loved being outdoors I loved sort of just yeah being around being going to the woods was like my favorite thing to do but yeah. I feel like sort of growing up I lost that a little bit but yeah. since then it's sort of especially in terms of mental health reconnecting with nature has had massive benefits and, really yeah. so that's quite quite a, a big thing for you the yeah, definitely. What it does for your mental health, or how it how it sort of, mm -hmm. and it does improve things, doesn't it? I know, if I if I'm going through, and, and I'm fortunate not to um, have serious mental health problems, but whenever I'm down or feeling 
um, blue or, or even just everyday stressed, I find that all I need to do, but sometimes the big thing is to get yourself outside. It's hard sometimes when you're in a bad place to get yourself outside. But once you do, um, yeah. everything, it, it just falls away, doesn't it? Definitely, yeah. The, the benefits of ecotherapy are just amazing. And I know doctors are now prescribing sort of going out into nature now, I heard. Really? Which is, yeah, which is, it's fantastic, really, I think. But, um... And I think it's, there's in, it's in Japan, I forget what it's, what the term is. Shivan something. Oh, forest bathing. Forest bathing. Yeah. I want to say shivan yoko, but it's not that. Yeah. Forest bathing. Yeah, um, I, that, that is brilliant. I read a book on that and it is, yeah, it's beautiful sort of how I wish in this culture we were more sort of connected with the benefits of nature and how being out in trees and our, like our symbiotic relationship with them is, is so important for, for our well being and. Yeah. Well, it's sad that we've lost it. I, I know I, you say, I mean, I, I don't, you're, you're in your 20s? Yeah. In your 20s, <laughs> yeah. I'm in my 60s. Yeah. Um, and I lost all of this for decades, literally decades. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it was in my, oh, was it my late 40s. I was walking across the Malvern Hills and, and I literally, I suddenly, I realised literally in an instant that I knew more about the French Revolution than I did about the trees around me um, and it was a shock wake up call and I, I think some I was lucky you know and, and since then I've been a nightmare to go for a walk with because I look at everything but I think some people spend a lifetime never having had that connection you see children small children um, already who are pulled away from messy areas or told not to touch things like slugs or or beetles and or to, to swat insects so i think it's it's conditioning yeah. very often from an early age but definitely you're lucky to have uh, have rediscovered it yeah. um, early on yeah. very lucky thank you <laughs> and the bee that um that i was so hoping i'd see because i've never seen one before is uh so commonly known as the large headed or big headed or fat headed mining bee poor thing and that's because the male the male has a head that actually looks a little bit like E.T. Um, on, on his body. So it's not your normal, your normal looking bee in a very, very waspish waist. And the chances are that the males, they could be over by now because the males always emerge and um, go searching for females and mate earlier in that bee's season. Um, and then once they've mated, they, they don't live for very much longer. But this, this is a solitary species so it's uh so it's very unlike the bumblebees and honeybees that that we're most familiar with so um so they don't live in colonies there's no um communication no overlapping generations so so the adults die before the young actually emerge next year so all the female the female somewhere here will be um that there'll be a little hole in the ground and she'll be going in and out of the hole and, and filling a little cell uh, about the size of my fingernail with pollen and she lays an egg in it and then um, the, the, the grub hatches out, munches on the pollen and then pupates and then stays there for another 10 months. And this little individual that we were just watching, this, this nomad bee, the cuckoo bee, is looking for a nest so that she can zip in and lay her eggs on the pollen that the large headed bee has carefully put there for her young. There's all this going on beneath the ground. It's fascinating, sort of, yeah, it's just amazing that the sort of the wonderful world that goes on within it. It's, yeah. I know. It's and you would walk straight past it, wouldn't you? Exactly, yeah. You would yeah. just never guess. And it's, um, I think the other thing that, that we were talking about earlier, um, it's a good time to mention it now is because of all the insects and I can see some more insects over there some flies it's we've heard so much bird song um, wow it's incredible there's so many birds here and um, and I know exactly how many birds there are because I happen to have brought along with me my Merlin bird app on my phone and I've had it on since we are oh my goodness 
What kind of it, birds have we found? You might not believe this. Okay, <laughs> so look. So chiff chaff, green finch, which is a result. Jackdaw, nut hatch. <laughs> it says red crossbill, but no way. That's a North American bird. Wren, dunnock, blackbird, song thrush, coltit, blue tit, chaffinch, carrion crow, herring gull, great tit, gold crest, great black backed gull. Magpie, robin, rock pigeon, wood pigeon. Wow, that's that is crazy. <laughs> that's and we've been here what an hour, an I think. Hour, I think eh? we've been here an hour. Yeah, that's such a diverse range of birds as well. It's, it's wow. staggering, and it's that's amazing. because of the habitat. Mm. So leaving these these grasses um, and wildflowers, which some people might call weeds, to grow. Mm. It, basically created an undisturbed habitat for so many different insects um, and a lot of the birds a lot of these birds are insect feeders not all of them but that's why they're here so it's so it's, it's kind of like a haven for plants and insects and birds and people yeah. <laughs> wow that is amazing have you been here before i've been here over once or twice yeah yeah but i never sort of had looked at it in this way before Sort of, yeah, it is, it is incredible what is actually going on that we don't normally notice or take the time to really have a look at. And, yeah. Yeah. Do you think it would make you go, do you have some sort of burial grounds or churchyards? Is it near Penryn you are, are you? Yeah, I, I mean, I grew up in um, Four Lanes and, like, you know, I've, I've, I've been there before, but I, I actually recently visited um, a church in Truro, on the outskirts of Truro, and they, it was filled, it was just a plethora of bluebells and snowdrops. It was absolutely beautiful. I think it, they really add, you know, to, to, the, to everything, I think. It, it really transforms the whole landscape and because it has a knock-on effect with all of the different animals and insects within the ecosystem, they are, it is such a brilliant thing to have spaces like this full of wildflowers and... Yeah, is this something I was thinking because with your your radio yeah. um, world and your your world of radio, mm. it must be a lot more difficult to talk about this when you haven't got the visuals because we're here now with Kevin yeah. um, filming us and so we've got all wow, <laughs> all of this in the background. Yeah, it's it's definitely it's it's brilliant to actually be out here and be immersed within it because I think I talk a lot about sort of mental health on the show and things people can do to improve their mental health but I feel like actually just being here it is it's completely you know it really puts into perspective how how brilliant it can be yeah so you're going to come again definitely <laughs> think you ought to I think and also I can just see behind us there are some some people here checking the is it the jackdaw oh, boxes yes. that are up in the trees I'm joined by Lois today could you tell us a bit about what you're doing here so um, this is a new study site for uh, the social cognition of jackdaws. So we set up these nest boxes so that um, we can study the jackdaws in a sort of semi-controlled environment. Um, but as it's a new study site, none of the jackdaws are currently here. And instead, these boxes are being used by some of the local wildlife. And in this nest box, we believe there's some great tit chicks um, and they'll pretty much free to occupy the space until the jackdaws start moving in. So yeah, I can show you up. Would you like me to show you? That'd be fantastic, thank you. Um, this is just a piece of plumbing equipment that we use to visualize the nests without having to get the ladders up there. Yeah. Oh, so you can just see that there's four or five uh, chicks in there. Um, maybe a few days old, um, and yeah. Oh, wow, that's so lovely. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a big box for them, so it's like having a mansion, I guess, for the crit tits. Um, yeah. Oh, wow, that is yeah. brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. would you give to people who want to get more into nature and get more involved with that? I would say 
get outside, um, whether it's for five minutes with a cup of tea, you know, before taking the children to school or in your, your coffee break at work, and just sit, sit, sit and listen and watch, observe, and don't get hung up on the names of things or identifying things, because that really doesn't matter. It's just get to know your local patch and, and maybe go out one day thinking, I'm gonna look at all the plants and wild flowers today and then the next day you might turn your attention to the trees and see what the trees are doing where they're in leaf and, and another day just listen to the bird song. So, so then bit by bit you pick up, um, you, you create a picture and it's personal for you and it's, it, it's just nurturing and such a peaceful, easy, gentle thing to do and it absolutely helps with, with, um, with mental health issues. Um, so yeah, I think just get outside and be outside. Yeah, be present. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then just, just listen, listen and, and watch. Oh, that's wonderful, wonderful advice. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so, and it was so lovely to meet you as well. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>